So this is the Huawei MateBook X Pro. Now, when I first saw this thing, I thought it would just be super thin bezels and a nice design with everything else being terrible, right? Like I didn't think it would have particularly good speakers or a nice trackpad, but spoiler alert, it's a 10 out of 10 product for the price. And even if we do ignore the price and just compare this thing against like every other laptop, this would be like an eight and a half or a nine out of 10. It's that good. So I'm gonna start off with some things that I like about it, some things that I dislike and who this laptop is geared for. So as usual, let's start off with the build of this thing. So the entire laptop is constructed out of this tough and solid aluminum with an anodized finish. It's pretty much like a MacBook Pro on the outside, except for the cheap plastic feeling texture and the separate piece for the hinge. But otherwise, it's a very well built laptop. The screen is very rigid, the keyboard deck is solid, Hinge tension is actually amazing, like they nailed it perfectly. I'm not sure how they did it, but they did. And you got the groove on the front for easy opening of the screen. Speaker quality is great. There's a pair of upward firing drivers beside the keyboard, as well as a subwoofer firing out from the bottom vent. And I'd say these are probably like second or third place for best Ultrabook speakers. Bass response is great, and I find that a lot of other Ultrabooks lack bass, and it just makes the audio sound a bit flat. They're loud, they're clear. The only issue is that my unit in particular has a little bit of crackling on the left speaker, but I'm assuming that's just an issue with my unit since the right side is completely fine. There's no crackling there. Keyboard layout is great. There's nothing strange with the arrow keys or strange function key placements. Key travel is satisfying. It felt comfortable from the start and I like the function key toggle so you can switch between having the function row act as like F1, F2, F3, or as brightness and volume controls with a single press. In the middle of the function row is the pop-up webcam, and this is probably the worst placement and angle that I've ever seen on a laptop. If you do a lot of video conferencing, just don't get this laptop, look elsewhere. The screen they're using is a 13.9 inch 3000 by 2000 display. It's got super thin side, top, and bottom bezels, and it's easily one of the brightest screens on any laptop right now. To give you guys a picture of how good the screen looks, it looks exactly like a MacBook Pro screen except with thinner bezels, like it's that good. I measured the color accuracy using a Spider 5 and it's pretty much dead accurate out of the box. It also supports touch and the anti-reflective coating does a very good job at blocking reflections. If you're interested in the wallpaper, I'll also have them linked in the description below. The trackpad is about on par with other high-end Ultrabooks, so it uses native Windows drivers, smooth glass surface, tracking is accurate and the gestures work well, the usual stuff. There is one issue though, and it seems to be a problem with all units, not just mine in particular, and it's that the trackpad rattles like there's a loose part underneath, but I'll put a link to a fix down in the description. It doesn't rattle like crazy, but it's there, and you'll notice it. This laptop is one of the most difficult that I've worked with, about the same as the XPS 13. There's a bunch of clips holding the bottom panel in place, but once you get the bottom panel off, there's literally nothing that you can do without taking off the entire heatsink and having to repaste your CPU and GPU. The i7-8550U and the MX150 deliver good performance, but this thing will throttle under load, which isn't too surprising given that this thing only has one tiny fan. The RAM is soldered on, so upgrade when you buy it, and the SSD they're using is a Toshiba X5G drive with excellent reads, but those writes are terrible. And it doesn't help that you need to repaste your cooler if you do decide to upgrade the drive. So I mentioned that the CPU and the GPU throttles, but it's more power throttling than thermal throttling. Like the laptop just limits the power so temps are really good, like this thing didn't even touch 90 degrees with an hour of stress testing, but the obvious downside is that you're losing a lot of performance. The exterior temperatures are also really good. It wasn't uncomfortable anywhere to the touch. Fan noise is silent on idle and on the load, the fan spun up, but it wasn't particularly loud or anything. So I'm really starting to wonder how much more performance you could get out of this thing if there weren't so many restrictions on it. On the left, you have a headphone jack, two USB-C ports, one of which supports four lane Thunderbolt 3. And on the right, you have a single USB 3 port. This is a pet peeve of mine, but laptops that limit all the USB-C ports to one side just kills me because you have the option of charging from both sides if you put a USB-C port on the left and the right side, but nope, they limit it all to the left side. They do include this USB-C adapter with a bunch of different outputs, so that's nice to see. It's like one of the best adapters that I've seen so far. 
The 57 watt hour battery inside is getting me around 8 to 8.5 eight hours of battery life with normal use. Charges through the USB Type-C port and the charger that they include has a detachable USB-C cable so you can easily replace it if the cable breaks, which is a nice touch. The last thing that I want to talk about is the customer support. So there are two main American retailers that are selling the MateBook X Pro. It's Amazon and Microsoft. Now, when you buy it from Amazon, obviously they have really good return policy and quick deliveries, but if you try and hit up their customer support and you tell them like your laptop has a broken keyboard, they're probably going to tell you to hit up the manufacturer. Like they're not really going to contact Huawei for you, right? Microsoft is a little bit different though because they actually hit up Huawei for you so you don't have to deal with the nightmare of shipping this thing back to China. So with the customer support out of the way, I mean, it's a fantastic laptop and unless you're after the best performance in an Ultrabook, this thing gets a solid recommendation for me. So that's the end of this review, I hope you liked it. If you did, you should hit the like button and consider subscribing, it helps a lot. I'll see you guys next time.